Hello, I'm Dr. Mark Daly and I want to thank you so much for attending our on-demand webinar. I'm going to share with you today what I see in a clinical setting with real fibromyalgia patients. I'm going to talk about the difference between the modern medical approach to the treatment of chronic conditions versus the functional medicine approach. I'm going to share with you the tests that I perform on my fibromyalgia patients as well as my findings. You'll also hear from one of my fibromyalgia patients. I'll tell you how I have success treating these chronic conditions like fibromyalgia. I believe the information has the potential to change your life. If you have any questions, feel free to email me from the link on this page or call my office. The rest of the presentation will be done in PowerPoint format. I hope you find the information useful. Okay, we're going to get right into the program. We're going to talk just very briefly about my education. I graduated Life Chiropractic University in 1996. I passed four national board examinations, two state boards. I graduated from Functional Medicine University and am a certified functional medicine practitioner. I have advanced education in functional endocrinology, functional blood chemistry, the brain and neurotransmitters, and natural thyroid di diagnosis and treatment. Functional medicine truly is a fresh new approach to healthcare, and you're going to be hearing more and more about it. Now, this next slide, I'm actually going to read it because it is so profound. I want you to hear every word, and please read along with me. What is functional medicine? Functional medicine is a healing art that addresses the underlying cause of disease using a systems-oriented approach engaging both patient and practitioner in a therapeutic partnership. That's very important, partnership. By shifting the traditional disease-centered focus of medical practice to a more patient-centered approach, functional medicine addresses the whole person, not just an isolated set of symptoms. Functional medicine practitioners spend time with their patients, listening to their stories, studying their past medical records, and looking at the interactions among genetic, environmental, and lifestyle factors that can influence long-term health and complex chronic disease. One of my main goals is to change your way of thinking. So often, and it's so easy to think that there will one day be a pill to cure all of your ills, and this is for the fibromyalgia patient, and really for just about any chronically ill patient. It's a fallacy, and it won't happen, because there's not one thing wrong with you. You are literally juggling probably a half a dozen issues, and we'll get into those as we move forward. But what is a diagnosis? So you've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, and maybe irritable bowel syndrome, maybe hypothyroidism. A diagnosis is simply a, a name for a set of symptoms. If you look at this illustration, you see an iceberg. Well, the tip of the iceberg is the smallest part of that whole massive structure. It represents the disease or the diagnosis. The diagnosis makes up is made up by a set of symptoms, yet the cause remains unaddressed. The underlying cause is a combination of digestive, absorptive problems, microbiological problems or imbalances, hormonal, neurotransmitters, inflammatory imbalances, immune imbalances, detoxification issues. The list goes on and on. Fibromyalgia medications target the symptoms, not the cause or the triggering event. Medicine may help a headache if the cause was a single bump on the head. But what if you're hitting yourself in the head repeatedly with a hammer? Well, the medications just won't help. Why? Because it's not addressing the triggering event, which is hitting yourself in the head with a hammer. If you want relief from the headache, stop hitting yourself with the hammer. That would be the cause or the triggering event. You have to remove the triggering event in order to achieve wellness. And this really is the downfall of the medical model when it comes to chronic conditions. You see, the medical model works great for a broken arm 
or a heart attack, but it does not work for chronic conditions. And because of this, you have fallen through the cracks. No doubt you've been to multiple physicians and you've gotten no better. Many of you have simply gotten worse, or at best you're left frustrated, still not reaching optimal health. You can't treat chronic conditions like a traumatic event and this is where I want to change your thinking. Chronic conditions are always the result of a continued assault on the body. It only leads to frustration if you simply treat the symptoms. You must remove the cause or the triggering event to reach optimal health. Let's look at modern medicine versus functional medicine. We're going to look at case one and case three. Um, sinus infections and allergies. I don't know how well you can see this slide because the print is fairly small, but the traditional medical approach, the patient was an adult male with a chief complaint of sinus infections and allergies for a period of six years. He had previously consulted with three medical physicians. Medical testing included a CT scan of the sinuses, which was negative for any pathologies. Treatment consisted of uh, Sudafed, Claritin-D, and Allegra. The results, like many of you, were poor. Now, the functional medicine approach, based on an extensive history and review of medical records, Dr. Grisanti ordered an airborne allergy test and food sensitivity test. The results revealed that the patient was highly allergic to two different molds. Dr. Grisanti instructed the patient in how to identify the molds in his residence and at work and what steps to take to eliminate them. The patient was prescribed a natural pharmaceutical that in, excuse me, increased his immune system's defense against molds and fungus. After three weeks, the patient was completely free of symptoms and has remained that way for the last two years. Now think about what we've been talking about up to this point. The medical model was to treat the symptoms with Claritin D, Sudafed, and Allegra, but not looking at the cause or the triggering event which was in his case mold. How, how many years would you have to take Claritin D, Sudafed, and Allegra if you don't remove the triggering event which is mold? So that is my point my friend. I want you well but you're not gonna get well until you can remove the triggering event and that was a beautiful uh, case study showing that to be true. Now, case three is irritable bowel syndrome and fatigue. Now, some of you I know are dealing to some degree with gastrointestinal issues. Irritable bowel syndrome is a condition where you basically know where every bathroom is from here to work. You map out the bathrooms because you don't know when you will have to stop as an emergency. So the traditional medical approach, the patient was a 27 year old female with an 11 year history of irritable bowel syndrome and fatigue. She had previously consulted with four medical physicians before scheduling an appointment with Dr. Grisanti. By the way, Dr. Grisanti was one of my instructors at Functional Medicine University. Medical testing included an upper and lower GI study and a colonoscopy, all of which were found to be negative for any pathologies. Treatment consisted of prescription medications. The results were poor. Based on an extensive history and review of medical records, Dr. Grisanti ordered a digestive stool test, which is basically a stool analysis, and an allergy blood test. There were two bacterial pathogens found in that GI study, both of which were known uh, in the literature to cause diarrhea. The uh, pa well, in addition, her allergy test revealed a significant sensitivity to gluten, which you're probably hearing a lot about now, and rice. The patient was prescribed a natural pharmaceutical that helped eradicate the two bacterial pathogen pathogens and was placed on an elimination diet addressing the rice and gluten. After one month, she was symptom-free. Now, how do you think she felt? Now, think about this again. 
she was being treated with some type of pharmaceutical medication, but the underlying bacterial pathogens and the food sensitivities were never addressed. Now, I'm going to tell you, for the fibromyalgia sufferer, this hits very, very close to home because you're probably dealing with some of these issues. I am here today to expose the triggering events of fibromyalgia. The symptoms of fibromyalgia, I don't have to tell you, but we'll cover just a few. Body-wide pain, extreme fatigue, depression, brain fog, insomnia. The standard medical approach is to treat each symptom separately. I pulled this off of WebMD, and I don't agree with this, but I want to share this with you so you see how the medical profession is looking at the at the disease. Today, doctors have better insight into fibromyalgia and are using many types of medication to treat its symptoms. Antidepressants, anticonvulsants, narcolepsy drugs, pain relievers, sleep aids. When used to treat fibromyalgia, these medications alter brain chemistry to help reduce pain, improve sleep, and ease anxiety or depression. What I want you to see again is that they're treating the symptoms and they are not dealing with the root cause of the problem. My question, are these drugs treating symptoms or the cause? I answered that already. I'm all for you feeling better, but I really want results for you that last a lifetime. If you treat the symptoms of the disease, you got to treat them forever. If you remove the cause of the disease, then, and only then, as I've shown you in these earlier case studies, can you establish health and wellness. So what are the underlying causes of fibromyalgia from a clinical perspective? Well, the underlying causes, and, and this is not a cookie cutter uh, situation here, but there are many similarities between fibromyalgia sufferers, sufferers. All of them, just about, suffer from some type of gastrointestinal issue, hormonal imbalances, toxicity issues, nutritional deficiencies, immune system dysregulation, neurotransmitter imbalances, and systemic inflammation. The cornerstone of fibromyalgia I have found in, in the real world is gastrointestinal dysregulation. Why is that? Well, think about this. Your gut houses over 60% of your immune system. 99% of serotonin is produced in a healthy gut. B12 and other B vitamins are made in a healthy gut. If your gut's not healthy, you don't have the benefit of those. 60% of your thyroid hormones are converted to their active form in a healthy gut and liver. Um, digestion and absorption take place in the gut. And of course, the gut's primary job is to protect the rest of your body from toxins. And when that breaks down, you become toxic. Have you ever lined up dominoes in a row? As many as you could possibly gather together to push them down just to have the enjoyment of seeing them fall. What I found out as I studied these chronic conditions is that almost like you line the dominoes up in a circle and it doesn't matter which one you knock over, it's going eventually going to affect the other parts of your physiology. Now, really a common breakdown, so when we, we talk about GI function, and that's where we're coming from, is that when your GI function is compromised, it affects the immune function thyroid function, adrenal function, your nutrition and your, your nutritional deficiencies, your toxification or your toxicity level, your hormones and your neurotransmitters. So everything affects everything else. And that's really important to understand. Now, to give you an idea, I, I put together a list of adrenal gland symptoms because I know without question that you who suffer from fibromyalgia have a lot of these issues, which might be exhaustion, which might be brain fog. And you can stop this video or this uh, webinar at any time and read the details there, but digestive issues, blood pressure, and emotional problems. See, these can all stem from adrenal gland symptoms. Um, hypothyroid symptoms. I know, I know, your doctor checked your blood and you have no, your thyroid's fine. Well, that's true, but I bet you suffer from the majority of these. 
why can your blood be right and your 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 blood work or your thyroid blood test be right and still have all the symptoms well it could be problems with other areas like gut function where you're not getting the conversion of those hormones but hypothyroid symptoms are being tired all the time being cold hands and feet and all over you need excessive sleep you gain weight easily uh, difficult bowel movements morning headaches outer third of your eyebrows thinning depression dry skin and mental sluggishness then there are hyperthyroid symptoms which are heart palpitations inward trembling and increased pulse rate even at rest nervous and emotional insomnia night sweats and inability to gain weight and believe it or not some people can have both hypo and hyperthyroid symptoms and that's usually associated with an autoimmune condition known as Hashimoto's thyroiditis we don't have time to get into that but it is not uncommon and some of you listening uh, are, are in watching have suffered from both symptoms Functional medicine approaches fibromyalgia, as you might imagine, much differently than modern medicine in the modern medical model. We use a systematic approach to uncover each patient's specific underlying cause. We review past medical records. We do a thorough history and timeline, which I'll show you in a moment. We do a metabolic assessment form. We do advanced testing based on the above. Then we construct a tailor-made plan for the specific patient. Now, if there are misspellings in the PowerPoint, please don't judge me because um, if I knew how important spelling would was when I was a kid, I'd have paid a lot more attention. That may not be my strong suit, but the material is still very accurate. Um, the review of medical records. We request records from physicians that you've seen in the past that may have done tests that will help us, help you. Then we construct a timeline. If you'll notice at the tip of the arrow is the current age. Then underneath that are current concerns, symptoms, and diagnoses. Then we back through the, the history of the patient to childhood diseases, conditions you may have suffered from, trips out of the country, medications that you've taken, conditions your parents suffered from, conditions your children suffer from. All those help us get a big and complete picture. Have you moved into a new house? That helps us to gauge levels of toxicities. Did you buy a new car? Do you have new carpet? All of those things really are important when putting together a timeline that will help us to discover your condition and the source and the cause and the triggers. The metabolic assessment form I alluded to, I imagine that the print is too small to see, but they're questions that are grouped in such a way that it helps me look at different areas of your physiology to help you and to decide what advanced testing might be needed. So when we talk about advanced testing, we can do stool, urine, saliva, blood, and hair, and we can look for different things in each of those tests. Common findings, however, with fibromyalgia patients from a GI profile, so a stool sample, would be bacterial dysbiosis. What is bacterial dysbiosis? It's a disproportional amount of good to bad bacteria, more bad bacteria than good. What makes bad bacteria bad? It's toxic. The waste products are toxic, let alone the damage that it does physically to your the lining of your gastrointestinal system. We look for opportunistic bacteria, which are bad bacteria that flourish in the absence of good bacteria. We look for pathogenic bacteria like H. pylori, which is a precursor to gastric ulcers. We look for parasites, yeast and fungal overgrowth, digestive and absorptive abnormalities, and we find these frequently in the fibromyalgia patient. From a urine profile, we see yeast, we see nutritional deficiencies, toxicities, which are no small thing, heavy metals, neurotransmitter imbalances, fatty acid imbalances, and energy production markers. From a saliva profile, we are able to see if your immune system is compromised. We're able to look at hormones, cortisol, progesterone, estrogen, insulin. We look for food sensitivities and adrenal dysfunction. We look uh, at the blood for just an, a tremendous amount of things. I only put a few here, but thyroid dysfunction, fatty acid imbalances. This is what we find frequently autoimmune conditions, which is when your own body is attacking itself, and 
and systemic inflammation, which is inflammation from the your the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. So why do you feel so bad? You have a physiological overload. Your GI system has broken down, developing leaky gut syndrome, which leads to food sensitivities, which opens the door to bacterial yeast and parasitic overgrowth or infestation, systemic inflammation, hormonal imbalances, and toxicities. You could handle one or two deviations from normal, but a physiological overload is when so many things are going on at the same time that your body simply can't keep up with it. And that really leaves you with multiple layers of dysfunction. Proper testing reveals the triggers. Now with that in mind, I'm going to show you just a few of the the lab results that we've gotten in the tests. Uh, if you look at this, this is a GI study. So we're looking at, it's a stool sample. The predominant bacteria are good bacteria. The opportunistic, we talked about, those are bad bacteria in essence. We look at pathogenic bacteria, yeast and fungal overgrowths. You see a parasite section. All of those are very, very important. From here, we're looking at uh, beneficial short-chain fatty acids, inflammatory markers. We're looking at the uh, secretory IgA uh, on the, the bottom of that last film there. We also will see uh, digestion and absorptive markers, which are very, very important. Uh, this is a urine sample. It's called an organic acid test, which is, which is wonderful. We're able to see things that I'm not showing you here, but we're able to look at fatty acid metabolism, carbohydrate metabolism, energy production markers, B-complex, vitamin B markers, methylation, which has to do with detoxification, neurotransmitters, which have to do with mood, sleep, and communication, oxidative damage, and antioxidant markers. We're able to look for vitamin deficiencies, like vitamin B deficiencies. We're able to look, again, for yeast and fungal overgrowths. There's over 52 different markers we're able to look at and detect from this one test. So this is a really, really valuable test, a real important test. Um, then from there, we don't do these on everybody, mind you, so it just depends on what we're seeing from the patient history and the metabolic assessment form and the past medical records, but we have the ability to check for toxic elements, aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, lead, mercury. I mean, you can see the list goes on and on here, so these are very, very important. The adrenal glands are your stress glands. I use this particular test to look for a few things, but overall to look at the adrenal glands. This is real good. We're able to look at cortisol levels. Cortisol is a hormone. And we're able to look at DHEA, which is made in the adrenal glands. We're able to look at insulin levels. We're able to look at progesterone. Again, total salivary IgA, which is the mucosal lining, your first line of defense in your gastrointestinal tract. We're able to look at for gluten sensitivities. And again, you've heard a lot about that, but this looks for that as well. So it's very, very important. Um, we treat the individual, not the disease. So we, we do everything is tailor-made for the individual. Then we decide what advanced testing to do. The advanced testing determines the method of treatment. Functional medicine treatment methods are, are extremely effective. But they're, they're really simple. We use dietary and lifestyle changes, which are very important, detoxification techniques, stress relieving strategies, pharmaceutical grade all natural supplements. But let's get real, real patient profiles. This gal is Dorothy and she is a precious woman with a wonderful husband. She came into my office and she had a laundry list of issues to deal with. That was what we actually looked at earlier, so we're going to look at that a little bit closer. Notice over here the current age, 59, she came in diagnosed with fibromyalgia, Renaud's, degenerative joint disease, lupus, and irritable bowel syndrome. Keep in mind lupus is an autoimmune disease. Um, if we trace back childhood, she d did have abuse as a child. She had migraines. Why is that important? Well, it sets the tone for the rest of your life, and migraines often require medications. Those medications can reflect on a person's state of health. We look at the age of menstruation. She had multiple fractures as a teen. She had sinus infections. What does that mean to you? 
Well, it means antibiotics. Antibiotics kill not only good bacteria, not only bad bacteria, but good bacteria. So it really plays a part. Um, she was diagnosed in her 20s with fatigue, lupus, red hands. She was hospitalized for depression somewhere in her mid-30s and with fibromyalgia. So you can see that all of these things uh, play a role. Uh, her grandmother had migraines, which were evidently passed on to her. So we look at these things so that we can tailor make a program and a plan just for the patient. The advanced testing after reviewing the medical records and patient history and the metabolic assessment form consisted of, which is a starting point for us, saliva, and a GI profile. That's called a, 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 an adrenal stress index, which is the saliva and the, the stool sample. Now, the adrenal stress index, this is what we looked at earlier, but I want you to note on this, there were four different times of the day that she gave saliva samples. So we're actually tracking and tracing the amount of cortisol in her saliva over a full day. It should be high in the morning, like it should flow with that green outline there. It should be high in the morning, and low and at night and you see where she's at. It's just a big slump there. The, then you pull the levels so you add them all together. Her cortisol load right here was 110. It should be somewhere between 22 and 46. So she was way off. What is it that affects cortisol levels or some of the things? Glycemic dysregulation, that's blood sugar. Sympathetic overflow, which might mean mental and emotional stressors and then tissue damage, inflammation, and pain. And most of you have more than your share of that. Um, we looked at her DHEA levels, and we combined those to get an idea how well her adrenal glands are functioning. And she was at the adapted phase with DHEA slump. So she was struggling there. We didn't, the uh, insulin levels weren't all that significant. Progesterone was within normal limits, but the total salivary IgA, which was 13, was way low because the normal is between 25 and uh, 60. So she was extremely depressed. That means her immune system in her gut wasn't functioning properly. And then we saw that her gluten sensitivity was borderline, but I've seen these tests before and I know that that was a false negative. That should be way positive because her immune system wasn't functioning at a high rate, enabling it to kick out sufficient antibodies. Now, what did we find? Again, I'm reiterating high cortisol levels, decreased secretory IgA, which had to do with the immune system, gluten sensitivity, and stage 2 adrenal fatigue. From the stool sample, we saw bacterial dysbiosis. We saw yeast overgrowth. We saw, mm, let's see, we saw some digestive insufficiencies. If you look there at digestion, elastase 1, that was way low. So from the stool analysis, we saw bacterial dysbiosis, yeast overgrowth, and pancreatic insufficiency. We constructed a recovery plan that that involved removing triggers, which we've talked excessively about, which in her case was food sensitivities and yeast, and then restoring a healthy gut and healthy gut flora and the immune system. Step-by-step -step recovery plan included yeast and gluten-free diet, supplements to calm the immune system, restore adrenal function, restore GI integrity, kill yeast, and to very importantly, detoxify. But I'd like to give you a moment and allow Dorothy to tell you her story herself. I've edited this for time. I had lupus, fibromyalgia, um, IBS, Raynaud's, and depression. Hmm. I'd been to other doctors, uh -huh. okay. and they just kept giving me pills, which weren't doing <laughs> weren't helping you No, much. and just making other things worse. Okay. And then, you, uh, of course, we practice functional medicine here, but um, we did some lab testing. Well, we talked to you. We got your right. history. Mm -hmm. We did a thorough history. We did a timeline. We looked at things that might affect you. And then um, from the, we did a metabolic assessment form, which basically was a series of questions that break down into different body uh, organs, for instance, or systems where your symptoms are, and we decided on a course of action, starting with testing, right? Right. Had you ever had any of that testing done before? No. Okay. So during that testing, we did a stool and a saliva sample. We found 
yeast, right? We right. found yeast overgrowth. We found bacterial dysbiosis. We found that you your enzymes weren't digesting your food, which is what we talked about a minute ago. Right. And um, through the adrenal stress index, we found that you did have some adrenal fatigue and also gluten sensitivity. Yes. <laughs> and um, decreased secretory IgA, which is the mucosal lining of the gastrointestinal tract. So once we found that out, we set a, a course of action which involved diet and lifestyle changes and some pharmaceutical grade supplements. How, how far into the program are we? Close to three months? Not close or? to three months, I think. Yeah. And then uh, how are you feeling today opposed to the way you were the day you walked in here? Oh, I'd have to say 85 to 90% better. Um, I'm not nearly as tired. I've got more energy. Aches and pains are going away. Um, the rain odds has decreased. Not having as much trouble with my stomach. I'm doing mm -hmm. pretty good. Okay. This has been something you've dealt with for um, almost, well, decades. Decades, decades yeah. yes. <laughs> I mean, decades. So. So within just three months, we've been able, with all natural care, to turn your symptoms around to the point that you're saying, well, somewhere 80, 85, 90% better. Um, that's pretty amazing. I have found that other doctors I went to, they never did any testing. They just, well, I think this is it, here's a pill. And we never got to the root of it. And getting to the root of it, finding out what I shouldn't be eating and not eating it, it's made all the world difference. I will say that Dorothy's story is extremely impressive, but Dorothy isn't the only patient that we've had success with. What you might like to do is go to BirminghamLifeChangingCare.com and you can actually see videos of uh, well over a dozen different patients with different conditions that were kind enough to allow me to video their testimonial. And then in our publication we also have uh, just excerpts from their testimonials and I'd be happy to get one of those to you if you call my office and request that. But let's talk about you. How did you get in the shape you're in? Well, the standard American diet was probably integral in getting you that way. The garbage that is so socially acceptable that we call food. In all honesty, we have deviated so far from the master's plan for eating, it's no wonder why we're reaping a horrible harvest of diseases. And fibromyalgia is just the tip of the iceberg. You've got Alzheimer's and diabetes and just an, an, an ever-increasing number of autoimmune conditions. Then you've got physical and emotional stress, which anybody who is alive in America in this day and age suffers from. Then there's toxicities. The, the water is toxic. Under your sink, your cleaning, cleaning, household solutions are toxic. The perfume, the makeup that you use is toxic. Uh, the dry cleaning, so many, there, it's the air we breathe. It's just really impossible to get away from all the toxicities that are in our environment. The road to health may be a winding road you may have to peel back one layer after another, but you can reach optimal wellness, optimal health. Your road to recovery is going to start with identifying and removing roadblocks to health. As you could see earlier, or as we pointed out, there are food sensitivities, pathogens, which may be yeast, fungus, overgrowth, pathogenic bacteria, uh, and parasites, toxicities, deficiencies, and then we've got to restore your gut health, your blood sugar stability, hormonal and neurotransmitter imbalances, and this is not an exhaustive list of things that we have to do, but these are very common things that we need to do in order to get our patients well. I hope that I've exposed some of these things and, and, and really, like I said earlier, change your way of thinking. Now, on this road to recovery, you may need a coach. That's what I do at Birmingham Functional Medicine. I coach a patient. I partner with a patient, taking them from where they are to toward optimal health and wellness. Well, I hope that this information has been enlightening. I hope that you see how functional medicine differs 
from the modern medical approach. Our whole approach from the way we take our patient history, the discovery phase where we review past medical records, the metabolic assessment form where we order advanced testing, the, the way that we actually treat the patient is completely different. Keep in mind that the patient information that we used today was a real person with multiple conditions and diseases in, including an autoimmune condition and a very complex history. I saw her again just a few months ago which was close to five years after her treatment and she's still doing extremely well. So the truth of the matter is functional medicine works for fibromyalgia. There are a few ways that I can help you. We have free resources, some of which you, you may have already seen at fibromyalgiadoc.com. I have an awesome course on GI function, the key to fibromyalgia pain relief. We have a clinic pharmacy with pharmaceutical grade supplements that help to relieve the symptoms of fibromyalgia in many cases. And we have personal services where I work with you personally one-on-one. -on -one. We do this either on the telephone, through the internet, where we could look at each other face-to-face. -face. We have a variety of those programs, like the one-time consultation. We have a one-time consultation with a follow-up 30 days later. We have an intensive fibromyalgia treatment program where we basically talk every two weeks for three to four months. They range in price from free to several thousand dollars. You can go to fibromyalgiadoc.com or you can go to FM House Calls. It's for functional medicine, House Calls, fmhousecalls.com for more on our personal services. No matter what you do, don't give up. I believe that you have a purpose in life, that you have a destiny to fulfill. The sad thing is that many people never fulfill their destiny because they're sick and they're incapacitated by their illness. Please don't let that be you. If I can be of any help on your journey, feel free to contact our office. We will send you a metabolic assessment form. Um, that is the first step and then of course set up an initial consultation but thank you so much for your time and attention God bless you I wish you the very best of health